Hello everyone, my name is Suba Ross and I'm Director of Admissions for Tulane University School of Public Health and Tropical Medicine located in New Orleans. Today's interviewees are Shokafe Ramirez and Professor Francoise Grossman. Would you like to introduce yourselves? Yes, uh, it's a pleasure. Good uh, afternoon everyone. Uh, my name is Francoise Grossman. I am a faculty at the School of Public Health and um, I'm, what do you want me to do specifically? That I, what I teach now? Or yeah, let's what, talk about um, your research and professional let focus. Me, yes, let me talk a, bit, a, a little bit about my background. Um, so I'm, I have an interdisciplinary training, like I, I like to say, combined training in uh, public health, nursing, and anthropology, which I bring everything in the, in the classroom. And um, I do have a master from uh, Tulane. I've been teaching at Tulane for about 10 years now. And uh, most of my uh, work has been done in West Africa. The focus of my uh, work is really in maternal and child health with a little soft spot for uh, women's health, reproductive health. Um, but um, I do also, I did also work uh, in the United States uh, for about seven years for um, the Louisiana um, Office of Public Health as a training manager for the Title X program. Okay. Where are you from originally? So I'm from France and Switzerland, both, both countries. I was trained uh, in France and in Switzerland. Um, my nursing school was uh, there, anthropology okay. as well, and uh, my master here at Tulane. Okay. And Chocafe? Hi, I'm Chocafe Ramirez. Um, I am the assistant director of the Tulane Center of Excellence in Maternal and Child Health. I am a New Orleans native and got my MPH here at Tulane. And um, between my MPH and coming back to work here, I worked for a variety of health departments, primarily as an epidemiologist um, at the city, county, and state levels. Um, and now I work very closely with our Master of Public Health, maternal and child health students, um, basically helping them figure out what they want to do with their lives and how to do it. Thank you. Well, Dr. Professor Grossman, yeah. you are a faculty member in Global Community Health and Behavioral yeah. Sciences. What is your role? So, as a clinical assistant professor, I basically teach. My role is really uh, teaching. Um, I have, I teach at in the. Uh, we have a, we have an undergraduate school with a pretty large uh, undergraduate program in public health. So I teach at the undergraduate level but I also teach uh, at the graduate level. Um, at the undergraduate, I teach uh, courses that are a bit more focused on maternal and child health. At, um, at, at the graduate level, I, I teach courses in uh, monitoring and evaluation. Um, and maybe it's not as sexy, I would say, as maternal and child health, but it's a very, very important course. And students are learning skills that uh, would be very useful uh, as a public health professional. Okay, and then well, specifically, what do you teach? So, um, undergraduate, we, I teach uh, courses in maternal and child health, global maternal and child health, and obstetric and gynecology. Mm -hmm. And uh, my course at the graduate level, it's called Monitoring and Evaluation of uh, Global Health uh, uh, Problems, uh, Programs, sorry. And uh, really, it's a course that is really focused on methods, mm -hmm. um, teaching students to evaluate what they do. Very often, uh, you implement program, you want to know if this program is well implemented and um, if it's implemented as it should have been implemented, and also if uh, the program is working as we expected the right. program to work. I believe it's a required course. Right? It is a required <laughs> course, exactly. So yeah, we, we are several faculty teaching this, uh, this same course. Uh, in fact, two faculty teaching, myself and another faculty. Well, when I am recruiting with prospective students, one of the most common questions that I have is about our maternal and child health program. It seems to be very popular and there's lots of interest out there. Yes, um, yes, there is a lot of interest in uh, maternal and child health. First, it is a, a crucial issue in public health. It's a national priority in most countries. Um, 
maternal and child health has decreased in uh, the rates of maternal and child health and of maternal and child mortality have decreased in most uh, countries, especially in developing countries and in developed countries. Um, in the United States, uh, we have not been so lucky. In fact, we've seen some, some increase, uh, especially in maternal uh, morbidity, mortality. Sorry. And so um, there is a need for, uh, for more policies, more programs to strengthen uh, our policies and to, to research more uh, evidence-based programs in order to, to address this problem. We also have a program with uh, discrepancy, racial discrepancy um, in the United States. Um, so there is work for, uh, for public health uh, professionals and it is a, so, so our department offer one uh, program uh, in uh, among the five programs that we offer in our department. One of them is on maternal and child health, and um, so we offer uh, the um, MPH with a uh, focus on uh, maternal and child health. And about credits, so it's just the same number of credit than for other um, MPH. Uh, it's 45, students have to complete 45 credits. Uh, 15 would be the required school uh, courses, foundational courses that students have to take, and the 30 others would be uh, specific on uh, maternal and child health. And we have um, a wide range of faculty with uh, a multidisciplinary background. We have uh, medical doctors, anthropologists, uh, sociologists, uh, social workers, uh, demographers. Um, so, a wide range of faculty with a wide range of experiences as well. Yes, uh, that sounds like a great diversity among the faculty. Yes, in the department. Yeah, and also faculty who have experience working uh, domestically, but working. Uh, overseas as well so they will they will gain a lot of uh, experiences well what are some of the ways that a maternal and child health student can apply their newly acquired skills uh, we have um, so so students uh, we have projects that students uh, can uh, participate in uh, most of our faculty are research faculty mm -hmm. and they actually have a, a project uh, they have grant whether in United States or uh, in uh, globally in internationally in developing countries and students can certainly apply to participate in uh, in these projects uh, we also have community base we also have our research center we have several research center um, um, and student can work through uh, this research center. We can talk a little bit more about this research center. And a uh, student can also, um, uh, student have a strong partnership with community-based organization, and therefore uh, they can work with this uh, organization. These community-based organizations are always uh, very uh, happy to receive uh, students um, who can work very often for free, but uh, um, at least they can apply their new skill, their knowledge, and help this organization to move forward with their project. Um, and finally, a student will have to do a practicum. And this is a 250 hours work um, where we choose uh, an organization that uh, really fit uh, what they would like to do. I always advise my students uh, to choose an organization where they would like to work in, so that they have a foot in the in the organization already. Um, so it could lead to a job opportunity. And that then. could lead exactly that could lead uh, to a job opportunity. And um, so they would spend 250 hours. That's a, a, a long time. Yeah, great experience. Uh, and they have time to uh, to practice their skills, uh, apply mm -hmm. their knowledge. So yes, yeah, so there are plenty of opportunities for Excellent. students to really. Um, I think just speaking to the kinds of opportunities that students have, um, the MCH degree is very broad in terms of, um, well, I, sh I should say the MCH field is also broad. Um, it addresses the health of infants, children, adolescents.
adolescents, women, and families. Um, and so it really is um, an opportunity for the student to develop what skills they think they'll need to do the work. And we work with them to help identify what are the skills you need to be able to carry out this work later. Um, and I think we have you know, a number of examples of students who have used their practicum to help build that skill set and then connect them to jobs yeah. after graduation. And, and we have the, the, the centers, I mean the research centers, like the Maria Media Centers. Or the Maria Amelia Center is a, an interdisciplinary research, uh, right. research center with a wide range of projects. Um, uh, project, for example, one of the projects would be, or studies, studies and projects, research studies and projects. One of the research uh, would be to look at the impact of uh, violent neighborhood on pregnancy outcome. Mm -hmm. They also looked at the impact of these uh, reproductive rights policies mm -hmm. on women and child uh, health. Uh, and they have, they do some evaluation on uh, various projects. So uh, here again, a lot of opportunities for students to be involved in the project uh, that we have through uh, the uh, Mary Amelia Center. And what is the mission for the Mary Amelia Women Center? It's really to enhance the, 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 wealth and, uh, the health and well-being of uh, children and, and family in New Orleans, but also in the United States. Okay, so and there are partnerships that are formed, right? It's a lot of partnership, yes. Um, these projects and these studies are obviously uh, taking place in partnerships with uh, various uh, com community-based uh, organization in, in New Orleans. Okay. So students really get to be involved uh, in the community in New Orleans. Excellent opportunity. Well, Shokfe, one of our other centers is the Tulane Excellence in Maternal and Child Health Center. Would you like to talk a little bit about that? Sure. The Tulane Center of Excellence in Maternal and Child Health, or the KEMCH as we like to call it, uh, because Tulane Center of Excellence in MCH is rather long, um, is a, a federally funded um, center to help develop the maternal and child health workforce um, in the United States. Um, so we offer various seminars and learning opportunities that are open to the school at large and the community at large. Um, but a, a strong part of our program, of our center, is the MCH Scholar Program. This is a two-year program that's open uh, to all incoming maternal and child health students to apply to. Um, and it provides additional training um, and um, opportunities for personal and professional development. Um, so all of our students who are in that program, we meet as a group regularly, so that helps build stronger bonds with their classmates. Um, we also have individual mentoring meetings with each of them, and our emphasis is on practice. And so there are additional assignments to help um, students gain clarity about what they want to do and how to do it. Um, each first year student does rotations with local organizations doing work in maternal and child health. Um, their second year, they choose a specific organization that they would like to volunteer with several hours a week. And so the hope is that by gaining that exposure, um, they will gain more clarity about what they want to do, they will gain more skills, um, they may gain uh, connections for a future job, um, and then we also uh, provide opportunities for them to go to national conferences each year. And they go to my class. They yes, that they, is another yes. opportunity. The yeah. second year scholars all um, go to Dr. Gro the Professor Grossman's class, um, as well as um, undergraduate students at another university to give short lectures. And they really enjoy that opportunity yeah. to share what they've learned so far in maternal yes, and child health. Students, students love that. They come in the class, they share the experience, and they, undergraduate students get to ask questions about uh, the experience. And uh, frankly, uh, I it's really a positive experience for both, yes. uh, for the undergraduate and for the, the scholars. Definitely sounds very positive. Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, well, if someone were considering the MPH in maternal child health, can you tell us if there are any prerequisites or prior work experience that's required before applying? No, uh, there is no work experience required and the, there is no prerequisite other than the requisite to enroll at Tulane at the School of Public Health, but um, there is no specific requisite. 
That's great to hear because uh, some uh, some schools do require work experience. So it's great that no. we don't have that. We want motivation. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> very good. Well, after obtaining the competencies in this program, what are typical jobs that someone might take? Oh, there are plenty of jobs. Uh, frankly, it's such a interdisciplinary program in, in, in itself uh, that there are plenty of opportunity for students. A uh, student can work uh, for, for, for professional at this point. Uh, uh, a, a professional with an MCH uh, a, a specialization can work in uh, state organization. Mm -hmm. uh, they can work uh, with community-based organization. They can work in clinics. They can do. Uh, they can be involved in a program that uh, will do home visit with hospitals. Um, um, what else? I mean, I think it's very it's open. Just, it's um, so open. It's really dependent on what is it appealing to to yeah. the individual. Um, mm -hmm. And so we, one of the beautiful things is, you know, as the oldest school of public health in the United States, Tulane has a very broad and far-reaching network. And so being able to um, connect with that network is a great opportunity yeah. to find a position that matches one's interests. Yeah, so it could be health education, it could be health evaluation, it could be implementation of programs, doing research, uh, uh, and, and, and with the wide range of population that were mentioned earlier, which is babies, children, uh, families, fathers. Well, you are right, I often hear that as well, that we are the number one pick for many applicants because of the networking opportunities upon graduation. So it's really popular. Um, okay, well, if uh, we're accepting applications right now to apply, it's www.sophas.org, and that's S-O-P-H-A-S.org. And if our audience has any questions for you, um, can we share your contact information? Of course, yeah, yeah, okay. absolutely. Well, that would be awesome. Well, I want to thank you both for joining me today. I appreciate all the information that you've shared. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.